Lecture 29. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the virtual university's course on business and technical communication. Today, we will look at writing proposals in a business situation. In today's lecture, you will learn about the different varieties of uh, proposal writing situations. Uh, we'll look at uh, proposal readers as investors and talk about that. What are they investing? We'll also look at the questions that readers are most likely to ask, questions that readers ask most often as we have done with uh, other, other forms of uh, business uh, writing. We look at a strategy of conventional superstructure for proposals uh, and we'll obviously go over the superstructure of proposals which will include the introduction, the problem uh, we, and the problem will uh, keep in mind the situations when the reader will define the problem for you or when the readers will provide a general statement of purpose and also when uh, situations when you must define the problem yourself. We will also look at objectives, product, method, resources, schedule, management and costs. So keeping in mind all these things we will look at the general superstructure of proposals. Now firstly let us have a look at the different varieties of proposal writing situations. What are the different situations in which you will be needed to or where you can be uh, called upon to write a business proposal? You may write proposals in a wide variety of situations. Uh, it could be that your readers may be employed in your organization or they may be employed in other organizations. Your readers may have asked you to submit a proposal or you may submit a proposal to them of your own initiative. Your proposal may be in competition against other proposals or it may be considered on its own merits uh, alone. In other situations, your pro proposal may need to be approved by various people in your organization before you submit it to your readers or there could be situations where you may submit the proposal directly yourself and you do not need permission from anybody else. It could also be that you, you may have to follow strict uh, guidelines concerning the con uh, content structure and format of your proposal or conversely you may be free to write the proposal uh, entirely as you feel as you think uh, fit. But there could also be a possibility that uh, once you have delivered the proposal uh, to your readers they may follow uh, a wide variety of methods for evaluating the proposal. So you would need to keep that in mind as well how will your proposal be evaluated or what method will your readers be using when evaluating the proposal or what is the purpose of the readers uh, when they will be evaluating your proposal. So keeping all of these things in mind, keeping all these different uh, situations in mind, you will ri um, be writing your proposal or you could be engaged in, all, in one or many of these different situations during your uh, work business situation, business life and write your proposals accordingly. Let us have a look at an, at an example where a proposal needed to be written. Helen wanted a permission to undertake a special project. She thought that her employers should develop a computer system that employees could use to reserve conference rooms. She concluded that her company needed such a system as she had arrived for a meeting several times only to find that the room was reserved for somebody else. As she is employed to write computer programs, she is well qualified to write one that would uh, that could reserve conference rooms. However, she cannot work on this uh, new program without the permission of her boss. Consequently, she wrote a proposal to her boss. As she wrote, she had to think about two people, her boss and her boss's boss who had to decide without consulting other people. These two people were her readers, her own boss and the boss of her boss. Because her employers had no specific guidelines, she could use any format, structure and content to write her proposal. Furthermore, she did not need anyone else's permission to write the pro proposal, although she would need an approval for sending a proposal to another department. Now as you saw, she, uh, she was going to write the proposal of her own initiative. Kisi ne unko kaha nahi tha ki aap proposal likhe? Helen ne khud ek problem identify ki. और उन्होंने कहा सोचा कि मैं अपने बॉस को एक प्रपोजल भेजती हूं कि मैं इस प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्व कर सकती हूं एक नया कंप्यूटर प्रोग्राम बना के और उन्होंने खुद 
اس پروپوزل کو لکھا کیونکہ ان کی کمپنی کی کوئی خاص گائیڈ لائنز نہیں تھیں تو ان نے ان کو فارمیٹ وغیرہ وہ اپنی مرضی سے چوز کر سکتی تھیں کیونکہ ان نے وہ پروپوزل صرف اپنے ہی باس کو اور انہی کے ڈائریکٹ باس کو دکھانا تھا اس لیے ان کو کسی کی ضرور اجازت کی بھی ضرورت نہیں تھی اگر وہ کسی اور ڈپارٹمنٹ میں یا کسی اور کمپنی میں وہ پروپوزل بھیج رہی ہوتی تو پھر ان کو شاید اپنے باس سے اجازت لینے کی ضرورت پڑتی سو کیپنگ آل دیز تھنگز ان مائنڈ دین شی اسٹارٹ رائٹنگ ہر پروپوزل آلسو ہیلن ڈڈ ناٹ نیڈ ٹو تھنک اباؤٹ کمپٹیشن فرام ادر ڈپارٹمنٹس اور کمپٹیشن فرام ادر پیپل ہو ور رائٹنگ ہو ور پروپوزنگ سملر پروجیکٹس بیکاز ہرز وڈ بی کنسیڈرڈ آن اٹس اون میرٹ ان کی کمپنی میں اور کوئی لوگ نہیں تھے جو اس ٹائپ کا پروگرام ڈیزائن کرنا چاہ رہے تھے وہ اکیلی تھی تو اس لیے ان کو کمپٹیشن بھی نہیں تھا ہاؤ ایور ہر پروپوزل ہیڈ ٹو بی پرسویسو انف ٹو کنوینس ہر ریڈرز دیٹ ہر ٹائم وڈ بی بیٹر یوٹیلائزڈ ڈوئنگ میکنگ دس نیو پروگرام رادر دین ہر ریگولر ڈیوٹیز اب ظاہر ہے اگر ان نے ایک نیا پروگرام ڈیزائن کرنا ہے تو اس کے لیے ان کو ٹائم چاہیے تھا اس کے لیے شاید کچھ ان کو بجٹ بھی الوکیٹ کرانا ہو تو اب ان نے اپنے پڑھنے والوں کو اپنے جو کہ ان کے باس تھے ان کو یہ کنوینس کرنا کرنا ہے کہ جو پروپوزل وہ دے رہی ہیں جو کام کرنا چاہ رہی ہیں وہ زیادہ مفید ہے کمپنی کے لیے بنسبت اس کام کے جو وہ اس وقت موجودہ حال میں کر رہی ہیں کیونکہ ظاہر ہے وہ اپنا کچھ کام کر رہی تھیں اسی کے لیے وہ امپلائی کی گئی تھیں اس کمپنی میں تو وہ جتا بھی ٹائم لگے گا نیا پروگرام بنانے میں اس ٹائم میں اپنے پچھلے کام کو چھوڑیں گی نگلیکٹ کریں گی کسی اور کو دیں گی سو شی نیڈیڈ آبویسلی ٹو گیٹ پرمیشن فرام ہر باس اینڈ شی نیڈیڈ ٹو کنوینس ہر باس دیٹ شی وڈ بی دا اٹ وڈ بی بیٹر آف دا کمپنی وڈ بی بیٹر آف بائی ہیونگ ہیلن ورک آن دیٹ نیو کمپیوٹر پروگرام نا لیٹس ہیو اے لوک ایٹ انادر ایگزامپل یہ تو ہم نے دیکھا ایک ایگزامپل ایک پروپوزل کی سچویشن اب ایک اور سچویشن دیکھتے ہیں جس میں کسی اور نے ایک پروپوزل لکھنا ہے دس سیکنڈ پروپوزل ول بی رٹن انڈر مچ ڈفرینٹ سرکمسٹانسز دین ہیلنس ٹو بگن ود تھری ڈفرینٹ پیپل ووڈ رائٹ دس پروپوزل لیٹس ایزیوم دیٹ دا رائٹرز ور اے پروڈیوسر اے اسکرپٹ رائٹر اینڈ اے بزنس مینیجر سیکنگ فنڈس فرام نان پروفٹ آرگنائزیشن اینڈ دا فیڈرل گورنمنٹ ٹو پروڈیوس ٹیلی ویژن پروگرامس دا ڈپارٹمنٹ لرنڈ that the government was interested in making programs about the environment. Uh, to learn more about what the government wanted, the writers obtained copies of the request for proposals that the government had issued out. Now, this situation was such a situation in which three people were involved, who were working in a department and they wanted funds from a non-profit organization and from the government, that they would get some money from the government. وہ کہ وہ انوائرمنٹ پہ پروگرامس بنائیں ان کو یہ پتہ اندر پتہ ہو چلا کہ گورنمنٹ انوائرمنٹ کے اوپر پروگرامس بنانے پہ پیسہ دینا چاہ رہی ہے اب ظاہر ہے گورنمنٹ نے بھی کچھ ریکویسٹ فار پروپوزلس پبلش کیے اخباروں میں یا اور کہیں اور تو ان لوگوں نے ان تین لوگوں نے ان کی کاپیز لیں تاکہ ان کو پتہ چلے کہ آخر گورنمنٹ کس ٹائپ ٹائپ کے پروگرامس بنا رہی ہے اور گورنمنٹ کی نیڈس دیکھ کے ہی وہ اپنا پروپوزل دیں گے کیونکہ ظاہر ہے اگر آپ نے کسی کو کنوینس کرنا ہے کہ آپ کا پروپوزل اچھا ہے تو آپ کو پہلے سے یہ پتہ ہونا چاہیے کہ جو جن کو آپ جو آپ کے ریڈرز ہیں ان کی نیڈس کیا ہیں تاکہ آپ پھر اپنے پروپوزل میں ان نیڈس کو ایڈریس کر سکیں سو ان دے پروپوزل دیز تھری رائٹرز ایڈریسڈ این آڈینس دیٹ واز ویری ڈفرینٹ فرام ہیلنس آڈینس ہیلنس آڈینس واز اونلی ہر باس اینڈ ہر باس از باس دی آڈینس فار دیز تھری پیپل وہ پیپل ان دی نان پروفٹ آرگنائزیشن اینڈ پیپل ان دی فیڈرل گورنمنٹ لیٹس ہیو اے لوک ایٹ ہو آل would uh, have a look at their proposals. Now, we all know that the government receives many proposals every day. Many people are asking uh, the government for their funds. Let's assume that this government received about four proposals daily and they only funded one of those proposals every day. Uh, to evaluate the proposals that the government gets, it sends them to experts across the country مختلف ایکسپرٹس کو وہ پروپوزلس بھیجتے ہیں کہ ان کو دیکھیں ان کو ایویلویٹ کریں یہ کیسے ہیں اور پھر وہ ایکسپرٹس ان پروپوزلس کو ریویو کر کے ان کا ایک ریویو لکھتے ہیں نا دیز ریویوز آر دین ریڈ بائی اسٹاف ایٹ دا گورنمنٹ جو گورنمنٹ کے لوگ ہیں وہ خود ضروری نہیں ہے کہ سارے پروپوزل کو خود ریویو کریں ایکسپرٹس ریویو کرتے ہیں ان کو ایک سمری بھیج دیتے ہیں کہ ہم نے یہ ان کا ریویو کیا نا اوپین دی اسٹاف ایٹ دا گورنمنٹ ریویوز دیز دین دے میک دا میک اے ڈیسیزن اینڈ Uh, depending on who which uh, proposal has received the best review best response from the experts 
دے ڈسائڈ ٹو گیو دا منی ٹو دوز پیپل تو خاصے لوگ انوالو ہوتے ہیں فائنل ڈیسیجن میں گورنمنٹ کے اپنے لوگ ہیں جو ان پروپوزلس کو فارورڈ کر رہے ہیں ظاہر ہے جو پروپوزلس کو شروع میں ہی بیکار لگیں گے ان کو شاید وہ ایکسپرٹس کو بھیجیں بھی نہ پھر وہ ایکسپرٹس ہیں جو ان کو پڑھ رہے ہیں پھر وہ لوگ ہیں جو ان ایکسپرٹس کے ریویو کو پڑھ رہے ہیں اور یہ سب ان سب لوگوں کی نظروں سے ہاتھوں سے یہ پروپوزل کو گزرنا ہے سو بفور دی رائٹرس کڈ ایون میل دا پروپوزل ٹو دا گورنمنٹ دے ہیڈ ٹو اپٹین دی اپروول آف دیئر اون ڈپارٹمنٹ دے ہیڈ ٹو گیٹ اپروول فرام سیورل ایڈمنسٹریٹرس ایٹ دی ٹیلی ویژن اسٹیشن اور وے دے ور ورکنگ اور دی دی پروڈیوسر ود ہوم دے ور ورکنگ پہلے تو ہم نے بات کی کہ گورنمنٹ کے پاس جب پہنچے تب کن کن لوگوں کی نظروں سے پروپوزل گزرے گا لیکن اس سے پہلے بھی انہیں اپروول لینا ہے اپنے ڈپارٹمنٹ سے اپنی کمپنی سے اینڈ دس آبویسلی دے نیڈ دس اپروول بیکاز دی پروپوزل وڈ اف اٹس ایکسیپٹیڈ دین اٹ وڈ بی اے کانٹریکٹ بٹوین دی اسٹیشن دا ٹیلی ویژن اسٹیشن اینڈ دا گورنمنٹ سو آبویسلی جسٹ تھری پیپل ورکنگ الون ان آرگنائزیشن کے ناٹ سینڈ آؤٹ اے پروپوزل آن بہاف آف دی آرگنائزیشن دے نیڈ اپروول فرام دی ہائر اپس ود ان دی آرگنائزیشن از ویل بیکاز اٹ بیکمز اے بائنڈنگ کانٹریکٹ اف اٹس اپروڈ so the station then the administration at the station looks at the proposal assures itself that all the uh, things that have been mentioned in the proposal all the promises that have been made uh, all the con- all the things that will be in the contract will be beneficial to it Th- these are these were just examples of two very different types of situations in which proposals can be written obviously there are a multitude of uh, situations and these will va- uh, vary from person to person and from Um, purpose to purpose. Another thing that we need to keep in mind, apart from the fact that proposals are written under different situations, is that proposal readers are investors. The proposals written by Helen and the three writers from the TV station illustrate some of the differences between the different proposal writing situations. But despite these differences, almost all proposal writing situations have two important features in common. One is that in your proposals, you ask decision makers to invest some resources such as time and money so that the thing that you propose can be done. The other thing that is common in all proposals is that your readers will make their investment very cautiously. They will be uh, acutely aware that their resources are limited, that if they decide to invest in the purchase of the projects that you propose, if they decide to allocate resources to the projects that you propose, then those resources cannot be available for other users. So, these two things are very important that you have in your mind when you are writing a proposal. First, the first thing is that the decision you have to take on your basis of your proposal, you have to take your time and money back to your proposal, to your project. And the other thing is that when someone has to take your time and money, they will think very carefully and very cautiously use it in their mind. تو آپ کا پروپوزل اتنا کنوینسنگ ہونا چاہیے کہ وہ اپنا ٹائم اور پیسہ اس میں لگانے میں انٹرسٹیڈ ہوں دا ریڈرز آر موسٹ لائکلی ٹو آسک سم کوشچنس دی ایز کوشس انویسٹرز پروپوزل ریڈرز ول آسک کوشچنس اباؤٹ پرچیزز اباؤٹ دا پروجیکٹ اینڈ اباؤٹ دی ادر تھنگز دیٹ آر پروپوز ٹو دیم بٹ فرام ڈپینڈنگ آن سچویشن ٹو سچویشن وٹ ایور دا سچویشن از most questions will remain the same some questions will vary but generally by and large the uh, proposal readers will be asking or the investors will be asking the same type of questions uh, and also the answers that people at work find persuasive and satisfying are also the same type one basic thing that readers will uh, want addressed is the problem your readers will want to know why you are making the proposal and why they should be interested in it. Zahir hai, wo janna chahenge ki aap ye proposal kyu likh rahe hain aur unka usme kya fayda hai. Wo us proposal ko mein paisa ya time lagane mein kyu interested honge. Also, they will need to know what problems or needs or goals your proposal will address and why is that problem, goal or need important to them. جو بھی آپ چیزیں ایڈریس کر رہے ہیں اس میں وہ ان کے لیے کیوں ضروری ہے اب ظاہر ہے یو ول دین کیپنگ دیٹ ان مائنڈ کیپنگ ان مائنڈ دیٹ دا ریڈر ول بی آسکنگ دیز کوشچنز یو ول بی گیونگ آؤٹ سم سلوشنز از ویل 
so your readers want to, to know want to know exactly what you propose uh, to make them do and how it relates to the problem that you have described they want to know what you want to do how it will solve the problem and therefore they will ask what kind of a solution will be successful to this problem and what will we need to do jo bhi solution hoga wo kya solution hoga jo aapne pehle problem batayi ke usse wo solve ho aur usme hame kya karna hoga another main uh, question that readers will have will be about costs what will your pro proposed product or activity cost your readers and is it worth the cost to them zahir hai aap agar koi proposal de rahe hain ya agar aap koi प्रोजेक्ट uh, कह रहे हैं कि करना uh, में इन्वॉल्व होना चाहिए या कोई प्रोडक्ट बनाना चाहिए तो उसकी कॉस्ट क्या होगी और वो जो कॉस्ट है वो फीजेबल होगी या नहीं होगी इन्वेस्टर uh, के लिए सो दैट इज़ आल्सो अ की की इशू दैट यू नीड टू एड्रेस व्हेन यू आर राइटिंग योर प्रपोजल्स ऑल्सो रीडर्स विल क्वेश्चन योर केपेबिलिटी इफ़ यू रीडर्स पे और ऑथराइज यू टू परफॉर्म दिस वर्क हाउ डू दे नो that you they can depend on you to deliver what they expect you to deliver or de how can they depend on you to deliver what you expect to uh, deliver from that project to zahir hai jab wo paisa aap mein lagayenge to wo phir ye bhi janna chahenge ki aapki capability kya hai aap us jo wo time aur paisa aapke piche laga rahe hain aap uske qabil hain ya nahi hain so you need to show in your proposal how you are qualified to achieve uh, what you expect to achieve from from the proposal that you are making now keeping all these things in mind we need to devise a strategy for uh, writing conventional proposals the conventional superstructure for proposals is a framework for answering all these questions uh, and this has been found uh, successful in repeated use in all kinds of situations where people need to write proposals when you follow this superstructure you will provide information on up to 10 topics and we'll be uh, uh, just briefly i'll be showing you a chart where we'll be, where we will look at all 10 topics in some cases you will provide information of all the 10 topics that you will look at but in other cases uh, in your proposal you will cover only some of the topics and that will also depend from vary from situation to situation even the briefest proposals however you will probably need to treat four topics definitely and these four topics will be the introduction problem solution and costs so ye jo char cheeze hain introduction problem solution aur akhrajat costs ye to aapko har chote se chote proposal mein bhi aapne target karni hai lekin lambe proposals mein aur bhi chand uh, cheeze hain jinko aap target karenge aur wo bhi hum dekhte hain jaldi but coming back to these four topics when you provide information you should provide more than just data you should try to make persuasive points and uh, we're going to look at a slide which describes persuasive points for each of the 10 uh, superstructures abhi maine aapko bataya ki hum jaldi dekhenge 10 points to ab hum dekhte hain ye 10 points kya hain jinki hum baat kar rahe the the first topic as i said is introduction the readers question will be Uh, when they are reading your introduction the readers question will be what is the communication about and that will be answered in your introduction your persuasive point how you can persuade the reader is that what you by telling them what you propose to do ab zahir zahir hai jab aap jahan aap bata rahe hain ki aap kya propose kar rahe hain aapne udhar is tarah us cheez ko batana hai ki aapke reader jo hai wo persuade ho jaye ki aap jo karna cha rahe hain wo सच uh, सही तरीके में एक सॉलिड uh, चीज़ है वो एक ऐसी चीज़ है जो रीडर के बेनिफिट में होगी एंड टॉपिक दैट इज डेल्ट विद इन प्रपोजल्स इज द प्रॉब्लम ना द रीडर ऑब्वियसली विल आस्क द क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द व्हाई इज द प्रपोज प्रोजेक्ट नीडेड जरूरत क्या है इस प्रोजेक्ट की या काम करने की जरूरत क्या है अब उनको परसुएट करने के लिए कि इस काम की uh, सचमुच जरूरत है यू नीड टू टेल दैम that the proposed action addresses a problem that is important to you that is important to the reader jab tak aap padhne wale ko ye nahi convince karenge ye nahi persuade karenge ki jo problem hai wo unke us problem ko solve karna unke fayde mein hai wo zahir hai us proposal ko accept karne mein unka koi interest nahi hoga another topic 
that needs to be addressed is the objectives. Uh, the readers will be asking what features will a solution to this problem need in order to be successful. Jo bhi solution aap de rahe hain, usme kya kya cheeze hongi ke wo uh, successful ho. Uh, so then you need to outline the objectives that the successful solution must achieve. Ke agar hum ye 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 cheeze kar paayenge, to phir humara jo solution hai wo successful hoga. The uh, fourth topic will be dealing with the product. Basically, the reader will want to know how do you propose to do these things. आपने solution बताया, अब reader ये पूछेगा कि अब आप ये ये लेकिन चीजें किस implement किस तरह करेंगे, जो आपने solution में काम बताए हैं, वो काम किस तरह होंगे? And your persuasive point will be, you will uh, start out by saying, here is what I plan to produce, and here is how it will work effectively at achieving the objectives. Objectives का तो जिक्र आप पहले कर ही चुके हैं, तो अब आप तरीका बताएंगे कि ये मैंने करना है, और ये इस त in objectives ko achieve karega. Then your reader will be asking you the question, are you going to be able to deliver what you have described here? And this question will address the areas of method, resources, schedule, qualification and management. Ye sari cheezein jo hain, ye aapke is sawaal ka jawaab dengi, jab aap in sab cheezein ko address karenge, ki aap क्या तरीका इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं आपके पास रिसोर्सेज क्या क्या हैं टाइम कितना लगेगा आप किस तरह क्वालिफाइड हैं ये करने में और आप इसको मैनेज कर सकते हैं या नहीं कर सकते या कोई और इसको मैनेज करेगा तो वो किस तरह मैनेज करेंगे अब ये सारी चीजें जो हैं ये डिलीवरी की बातें हैं सो ऑल दीज टॉपिक्स देन विल बी आंसरिंग टू दिस वन क्वेश्चन विल यू बी एबल टू डिलीवर वॉट यू प्रोमिस एंड यू नीड टू परसुएड योर रीडर दैट येस आई विल बी एबल टू डिलीवर because I have a good plan of action, I have the necessary facilities, I have the necessary equipment, I have the necessary qualification and I will be able to manage this project successfully. So you need to give evidence of all these things. Lastly, your uh, reader, your investor wants to know uh, very importantly what it will cost them. So then you need to convince your uh, reader that the cost is reasonable, that the cost is uh, reasonable according to the benefits that will be uh, uh, that the reader will get out of uh, by by approving this project. Zahir, if the cost is very much, then you have to show it that it is very much, but it is very much because it is very much in the long term. The benefit of it is that the cost is not much. So you need to then show why it is feasible because maybe it has some long term financial benefit for the company as well even if in the short term it seems expensive. So as you write you will see the relationship uh, amongst the uh, 10 topics that we have just talked about. The, a lot of them are interlinked and when you write, when you start writing, if you have these questions in mind, if you have these topics in mind you will be able to effectively deal with the proposal and you will make a very persuasive proposal. Think of uh, these topics as a sequence in which you, you lead your reader through the following progression of thought. You lead your reader uh, the, from uh, generally learning what you want to do which will be the introduction. Then you take them to the problem where the readers are persuaded that there is a problem, that there is a need, that there is a goal that is important to them. Then you are taking them to the objectives where the readers are persuaded that the proposed action plan will be effective in solving the problem, it will be effective in meeting the need, it will be effective in achieving the goal that the readers now agree is important. In the step, you have convinced the readers that the problem is important, the goal is important. Now you will show them that the, the plan that you are proposing is effective and that you will be actually able to achieve the, the goals that you want to achieve. You will then take them towards the methods, resources, schedule, qualification, management, all the, uh, the logistic parts. Uh, you will persuade them that you are capable of planning and implementing uh, and managing the proposed solution and you will also persuade them cons uh, consequently that the costs are reasonable in the light of the benefits uh, that the proposal the, that the project will bring. So if they take action then in the light of the benefits 
that their action will bring, the costs are reasonable. Now, there is no guarantee that your readers will actually read your proposal from front to back or that they will concentrate on each and every word that you write. Zaruri nahi hai ke jo bhi aap likhe, aapke padhne wale pura ek ek lafz padhe ya ye ke aapka proposal usi tarah se padhe jis tarah se likha gaya hai ke pehla pehle page se lekar aakhri page tak wo padhe. They they might skim through it. They might just look at the recommendations. They might just look at key sections. What are the costs? What are the solutions, etc. So each section has to be very effective. Um, if especially if it's a long proposal, then you really need to consider how your uh, audience is going to evaluate it. Each volume of your proposal, if it's a long proposal, may be evaluated by a different set of experts, people who are specializing their, in their own domain, but no, they might not read your whole proposal. So, ऐसे भी हो सकता है कि short proposal में तो जल्दी जल्दी जो पढ़ने वाले हैं वो key points पढ़ लें या शायद पूरा भी पढ़ लें लेकिन लंबे proposals में शायद एक इंसान आपका पूरा proposal पढ़े ही ना different लोग उसके different sections को पढ़ें और फिर उसको evaluate करें सो बट इवन वेन योर रीडर्स विल नॉट रीड योर योर प्रपोजल स्ट्रेट थ्रू द अकाउंट गिवन of the relationships amongst the parts can help you we we talked about the relationships of the different topics so if you keep that in mind then that will help you even if the readers are not read even if one reader is not reading the whole of your proposal or if even if the readers are not reading your proposal in the sequence in which it is written so if you keep these 10 areas in mind you can write a very tightly knit very effective proposal in which all the parts support one another effectively so then even if uh, one or two parts are missed out by the reader the other parts will uh, jump in to support what what they missed out up till now uh, we we just mentioned proposals that were several volumes long long proposals can be run up to 100 pages or hundreds of pages or even thousands of pages on the other hand short proposals could be less than a page how do you decide how long your proposal needs to be sometimes you can be very brief and still be very persuasive often you will need to touch upon only a few of the 10 topics that we talked about in order to be persuasive for instance helen's proposal involved only one person helen we we talked of uh, helen um, an employee who needed to write a computer program and her proposal only involved one person it was going to be written by one person it was only going to be read by two people so it didn't maybe didn't need to be very long helen's proposal didn't need any management plan because her readers already knew of her capabilities obviously her reader was her boss so he knew that she was able to design computer programs so she didn't need to write a lengthy uh, background of her qualifications and how she was equipped to write that program so therefore uh she could omit that part she didn't need to say anything more than maybe a few words about the experience that she had in writing such programs and because she was asking for only 2 weeks time to prepare the program the budget that needed to be allocated for it didn't need to be very extensive very lengthy uh she didn't need to present a detailed budget report uh she just needed to justify her proposal schedule so although she needed the time she did, really didn't need too many funds so again that section didn't need to be very long however in other situations such as writing to maybe nasa or some other big department where uh, uh, you are maybe going to be involved in a project that is uh, going to last over several uh, weeks or months or uh, years even and it's going to involve a lot of funds there then the proposal would be correspondingly long so depending on the scope the nature the purpose the length and the readership of your proposal you will decide the length of your proposal as well uh as i just said proposals that would be going to uh, large organizations large government organizations uh, you would need to address maybe all 10 topics and your discussion of each of these must fully answer the questions because uh, maybe the whole proposal is not going to be read by one person it might be split up and be read by experts as we mentioned earlier in the end you need to decide how 
long the proposal will be. And while you are doing that, you will think about your, the uh, questions that your reader will be asking as well and what reaction they will have to what you say. So, although you will keep in mind questions that the readers will ask even in short proposals, there will be less questions asked because the reader knows more about you and your abilities. In longer proposals, in, longer, in larger projects, there are more readers who know less about you you will be, they will be asking a lot more questions. So, you need to address all of those. Now, in the remaining of this lecture, we will describe in detail some of the ten, uh, the 10 topics that form the conventional superstructure for proposals. As you go along, keep in mind that the conventional superstructure represents only a general plan and you do not need to include each and every section in your proposal. You must use your imagination and creativity to adapt this superstructure effectively to your particular situation. Uh, in addition, as you plan and write your proposal, remember that the 10 topics identify the kinds of information you need to provide, not necessarily the titles uh, of the sections that you will include. Zaruri nahi hai ki aapne ye jo sare 10 topics hum dekhenge ki aapne in sab ke sections banane hain ya ye headings aapne deni apne proposals mein ye sirf isliye hai ki in cheezon ke bare mein aapne information deni hai ab wo beshak aap ek section mein sari information dein ya 10 areas ko aap do ya teen sections mein dein ya 10 sections mein dein ye aapki report ki length pe depend karega in brief in brief proposals some parts may take only a sentence or a paragraph may deal with uh, several topics together for example, writers often uh, combine their announcements of their proposals, their discussion of the problem and their explanation of the objectives under a single heading which might be introduction or it might be titled uh, problem or need etc. So, ek heading can there, do teen different cheezen bhi uh, address ki ja sakti hai. Also, remember that the conventional superstructure may be used with any of the three common formats uh, a proposal may be written in the form of a letter or a memo or a book so it could be any of these three formats depending on the length and the purpose of the proposal while making your proposal you should have sufficient information about the particular format that you're going to see now let's have a look at the topics uh, each of them in turn sabse pehle introduction ko dekhte hain at the beginning of a proposal, you want to do the same thing that you do at the beginning of anything else that you write on your job. You want to tell your readers what you are writing about. In a proposal, this means announcing what you are proposing. Aap kya cheez propose kar rahe hain, tabhi usko aap, uh, aap announce karenge apne introduction mein. Zahir hai, aap kuch propose kar rahe hain, isliye usko proposal kaha jata hai. Now, you will need to consider how long and detailed your introductory statement needs to be. In uh, proposals, the introductory statements uh, or the introductory announcements vary considerably in length, but they are almost always very brief. Um, by custom, the writers reserve the full custom of what they propose until later. They do not always say exactly what they are going to do right up front, they indicate it. After they have discussed the problem and that, uh, that their proposal is going to solve, then they give the solution or then this talk about what it is exactly that they will do. But initially in the introduction, they announce briefly what the proposal is about, then they talk about the problem and then reveal what it is that they will actually do. You may be able to introduce your pr proposal in a single sentence. Helen did this in her proposal. Let us have a look. I request permission to spend two weeks writing, testing and implementing a program for scheduling conference rooms. Ek sentence mein unne pura bata diya ki wo kya request kar rahi hai, unka kya proposal hai, ab wo aage uh, batayengi ki usko kis tarang karengi aur unka action plan kya hoga. When you propose something more complex than a two week project, you may need more words to introduce it. Obviously, you will need to justify it more, you will need to give a longer rationale. In addition, sometimes you may need to provide background information to help your readers understand what you have in mind. If it is a complicated process, then you need to give some more background information, so that your readers can actually understand what is it that you need to do. Now, after you have announced what you are proposing, you need to 
uh, give the readers what the problem is. You must persuade the reader that your proposed action will address a problem that is significant to them. Your description of the problem is crucial to the success of your proposal. Agar aapke padne wale ko lagega ki jo aap cheez propose kar rahe hain, wo koi itni major problem hai hi nahi, to zahir hai wo usme koi itna time aur paisa invest karne mein tayar nahi honge. You must not only define the problem, but also make the problem seem relevant to the reader. There may be times when the readers define the problem for you. Jinke liye aap proposal likh rahe hain, ho sakta hai unhi ne koi problem identify kiye ho aur ab aap एक प्रपोजल लिख रहे हैं कि उस प्रॉब्लम को किस तरह सॉल्व किया जाएगा अगर इस तरह की सिचुएशन हो तो फिर आपको सबसे कम रिसर्च करनी पड़ती है यू नीड टू डू द लीस्ट रिसर्च व्हेन योर रीडर्स डिफाइन द प्रॉब्लम जनरली दिस हैपेंस व्हेन द रीडर हैज आस्ड यू टू सबमिट अ प्रपोजल यू आर नॉट टेकिंग योर ओन इनिशिएटिव यू हैव बीन आस्ड टू राइट अ प्रपोजल एंड इन सच अ सिचुएशन योर प्राइमरी पर्पज इन डिस्क्राइबिंग द प्रॉब्लम विल बी टू शो योर रीडर्स that you thoroughly understand what they want you don't need to convince them that there's a problem you just need to convince them that you understand the problem and you understand what the reader wants at other times uh, you will need to devote research and creativity in writing a proposal when you are in such a situation you should find out what sort of problems your readers will consider important now there can be times when the reader does not define the situation but you must define the problem yourself uh, you may not have the aid of explicit statements from your reader to help you formulate the problem and this is most likely to happen when you are preparing a proposal of your own initiative without being asked by someone else to submit it jab aisi situation ho tab zahir hai aapko zyada convincing power istemal karni hai aapne zyada persuasive अपने प्रॉब्लम अपने प्रपोजल को बनाना है क्योंकि आपने इनिशिएटिव लिया है जिस तरह के हमने हेलन के केस में देखा कि उनने खुद इनिशिएटिव लिया था या जो हमने तीन राइटर्स की सिचुएशन देखी लेकिन उनमें जहां तीन राइटर्स की सिचुएशन थी वहां उनने अपने डिपार्टमेंट को कन्विंस तो करना था लेकिन गवर्नमेंट ने प्रपोजल uh, मांगे हुए थे हेलन के केस में उनके बॉस ने प्रपोजल नहीं मांगा था उनने एक प्रॉब्लम आइडेंटिफाई की उनने अपने बॉस को कन्विंस किया कि ये प्रॉब्लम सचमुच एक प्रॉब्लम है और इसका इस तरह हल हो सकता है Now, once you've done this, then you talk of the product. When you describe the product, your propo- proposal will produce. What is it that your proposal will do? That which is the product. You explain your plan for achieving the objectives. You told your readers about. आपने जाहिर है अपने readers को कुछ objectives बताए आपने कहा अब हम मैं ये करूं करूंगी तो इसका ये नतीजा होगा. Now you need to uh, persuade them that you can actually do this. you need to describe your project uh, or your product persuasively and to do this you need to do three things you need to tell your readers how you will reach your objectives you need to provide enough details to satisfy your reader and you need to explain the desirability of the product which will be uh, the end result of your project then you will come to the method the decision makers who act upon proposals sometimes need to be assured that you can in fact produce the results that you promise jo bhi hain jo apne aapke upar time aur paisa apna lagayenge unko kabhi ye bhi assurance chahiye aur ye bhi chahte hain ki unko ye pata chale ki aap jo kaam promise kare aap wo sachmuch kar sakenge aur aap kis tarah karenge zahir hai jab wo dekhenge ki aap kis tarah kaam karenge usi se unko tasalli hogi ki aap ye kaam kar sakte hain this happens specially in situations where you're offering something that ha- that takes special expertise something to be customized or created only if your proposal is approved now obviously when once you've outlined the method you will need to also outline the resources that you will need by discussing the facilities equipment and other resources to be used in your project proposal you assure your reader that you will actually use whatever special equipment necessary to do the job properly if part of your proposal is to request the equipment or to ask for the equipment tell your reader what you need to acquire and why what special purpose does that equipment fulfill in uh, making your um, project successful you also need to tell your uh, reader about the schedule about the time period involved what will be done when what are the specific deadlines people who read and listen to your proposals have several reasons for wanting to know 
uh, the schedule of your plan. The most common way to present a schedule is to provide a schedule chart and we will be looking at schedule charts in uh, future lectures. Also, I mentioned earlier that people want to know whether you are actually qualified enough to do, uh, do the job or not, whether the proposal, that the project that you are proposing, will you be able to fulfill it? Do you have the necessary expertise to do that? Uh, when proposal readers are thinking and investing in your project, they want to be sure that the proposer has the, enough, uh, has the relevant experience and capability to carry out the project properly. For that reason, a discussion of the qualifications of the personnel involved with the project is a standard part of most pro proposals. Agar aap akele us proposal mein involved hai, to aap apni uh, qualifications bataayenge, ya aapki expertise kya hai. Agar aapke saath aapki ek team hai, aur log involved hai, to aap unki bhi qualifications bataayenge, ki jo jo personnel involved honge us project mein, unki, unki kya expertise hai. Kabhi, kai baar aapko agar lamba proposal hai, to aapko unke shayad resumes bhi saath lagane ho, taake जो लोग इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं उस प्रोजेक्ट में जो रीडर्स हैं आपके उनको तक तसल्ली हो जाए कि जो आपकी टीम है वो सचमुच क्वालिफाइड है देन कमिंग टू मैनेजमेंट व्हेन यू प्रपोज अ प्रोजेक्ट दैट विल इन्वॉल्व मोर देन अबाउट फोर पीपल यू इंक्रीज द परसुएसिवनेस ऑफ योर प्रपोजल बाय डिस्क्राइबिंग द मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ योर ग्रुप अगर तीन या चार से ज्यादा लोग हैं तो फिर आपने अपने मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रक्चर भी बताना है ग्रुप में कि कौन लीड करेगा किसका क्या रोल होगा और उससे आपका प्रपोजल जो है वो ज्यादा परसुएसिव हो जाएगा दिस इज बेसिकली बिकॉज प्रपोजल रीडर्स नो दैट इवन क्वालिफाइड पीपल कैन नॉट वर्क इफेक्टिवली इफ द एक्टिविटीज आर नॉट कोऑर्डिनेटेड एनीबडी वेदर दे आर क्वालिफाइड और अनक्वालिफाइड इफ दे वांट टू वर्क इन अ टीम देन दे नीड समबडी टू कोऑर्डिनेट देयर एक्टिविटीज एंड दे नीड सम काइंड ऑफ अ फोकस टू हु विल डू व्हाट टास्क Lastly, coming to costs, one of the most important considerations uh, where uh, as far as the acceptance of your proposal is concerned, when you propose something, you are asking the readers to invest resources, usually time and money as I have said uh, repeatedly. Naturally, you need to tell them how much the project will cost. In some proposals, you may demonstrate the reason, uh, reasonableness of the proposal by also calculating the savings. that will result from your project. If you feel that the proposal is going to be very cost effective and it will actually save your readers some money, then you calculate that saving and show how the project will be so, is so reasonable that it actually saves them some money. So in this lecture basically, you learned about the different varieties of proposal writing situations. We looked at uh, the proposal reader as an investor and we talked about the different questions that they are likely to ask. We looked at the superstructure of proposals and uh, looked at the different topics that were um, relevant to a proposal which included the introduction, the problem, uh, the uh, objectives, product, method, resources, schedule, management and cost. If you have any queries, please feel free to email. The address is english at vu.edu.pk. Until next time. Allah Hafiz.